Today's shir begins at the top of Daf Tes at the Mishnah. Of course, we should point out that we are now with Siata Deshmaya beginning the second parak of Maseches Nazir. Before we read the actual Mishnah, we glance at the side where we have a no say a topic heading, which simply reads Hareni Nozir Min Hagrogros Umin Hadvela. Someone declares himself to be a Nozir from Nozir will say he restricts himself, but here he specifies from figs and from uh Dvela is a case of pressed figs into a cake form. Of course, Nazirus in the Torah represents abstention from wine and uh, we'll say vine products, grapes, tendrils, grape, uh, grape peels, grape seeds, uh, figs in their various forms are not a function of Nazirus of the Torah. So what effect does this kind of declaration have? So now, the Mishnah. Hareni nozir min hagrogros u min hadvelo. Beishamai omrim nozir. Beishamai says that a statement as such does create nazirus. And he must observe the laws of nozir. U beisil omrim eno nozir. Omar Rebbe Yehuda. Rebbe Yehuda disagrees with the Tanakam and he says, Af kisha omru beishamai even when Beis Shammai says that something takes effect, Lo Omru Ela Bioimer Hare Hain Olai Korban. In other words, as far as Rebut is concerned, he is prohibiting himself from eating figs. But there is no Nazirus whatsoever. Rather, what you have is a standard type of vow, a vow whereby he restricts himself from fix the Gemara quote, the opening of the Gemara is a quote from our Mishnah Hareini Nozir Min Agrogos Min Advelo Beishamai Omrim Nozir Vamai why should he become a Nozir Mikol Asher Yase Migefen Hayayin Omar Rachmona the Torah Rachmona is the Torah says that a Nozir is one who restricts himself from the Gefen and Yayin Gefen the vine and wine so, in order to understand Shittas Beishamai, the Gemara introduces the following. Beishamai savri law kirebi meir. The Omar ein odom moitzi dvorov levatola. There's a principle that you find elsewhere in Shas. Uh, Rashi quotes the background for Rebbe Meir. For our purposes, though, when a person says something that, technically speaking, doesn't make sense, we figure, but he must have had something in mind when he said what he did. And therefore, when he said, Hareini Nozir, even though his, his uh, specification wasn't accurate, people know that you don't become a Nozir from fig restriction. So, what was he saying? So, the principle of Ein Oda Motzi Dvorov Levatola, person doesn't say something for nothing, and therefore he was, in effect, trying to accept upon himself Nazirus, and it takes hold. That's the explanation for Beis Shammai. By the way, we have a number one, and this is in anticipation of a number two a little later. On the side of the Gemara, we've noted in our specially marked daf, the, under the Nose heading, Shnei Hez Beirim L'Machloikis Beis Shammai U'Beis Hillel B'Shitas HaTanakama B'Mishnosenu two explanations for the Beis Shammai that appears at the beginning of the Mishnah. Let's continue in the Gemara. O Beis Hillel, Savri Law, Karebiyosi, Beis Hillel, who said, there's no Nazirus here, holds like Rabiosi. Again, Rabiosi introduces elsewhere in the Shas a principle, and his principle says, the Omar, Bigmar Dvorov, Odom Nitfas, Vahai Nidro Upischo Imohu, when a person speaks, we pay attention not only to the beginning of what he says, but we take into consideration what he says it, till the end of his remark. At the end of his remark, he said, Grogros and Vela, that have no connection to Nazirus. So what the person was really saying was, I am Mechabal Nazirus, 
And then that's the nether. Pischoimo means the undoing of it, the voiding of his vow. And it's a type of, we'll say, retraction, where he said, I'll be a Nazir. No, uh, yeah, I'll be a Nazir yeah, from, from figs. So that's like saying, I'm not going to be a Nazir, because a Nazir is from wine, not from figs. So he said it initially, I'll be a Nazir, and then retracted, and he did that by saying, from figs. The Gemara asks, Ula Beishamai Nami Nether Upischo Imohu. Isn't isn't what we just said for Basil something that Beishami would agree with? <laughs> Namely, Rabbi Meir, upon whom we're trying to base Beishami's approach, Rabbi Meir would agree with that. So then we are back to square one. Why, according to Beishami, does the individual become a nausier? Ella? Uh, explanation number two for Beishami. Beishami Savri Law Kurebi Meir, Diomar. Ein odo motzi dvorov levatola. So far, that's what we saw before. A person doesn't say something for nothing. The cave on the Omar Hareini Nazir, and once he says, I am a Nazir, Havile Nazir, that locks him into standard Nazirus. Ki koomar minagrogus minadvela liitshuli hudakasi. And that's true, as we said before, that when he adds the grogus and vela, He's attempting, Richuli is like the word Lishoil, to, in, in case of, of vows, to rescind his vow. So he, he made a vow, and then attempts to rescind the vow. And this attempt to rescind the vow, and its ineffectiveness, represents Beishamai, consistent with what they have said elsewhere. Diamri, Ein She'ela Behektish. Sanctification does not lend itself, doesn't yield to She'ela. She'ela is the rescission of vows, or Hektish is dedication. When it comes to uh, sanctification of, of items, so She'ela, which works with regard to standard vows, does not work. She'ela, the rescission of, of uh, statements, uh, the retraction of vows, the voiding of vows, that concept doesn't apply to sanctification. And since, as a rule, she'ela doesn't uh, uh, is, is ineffective with regard to <coughs> sanctification, ain she'ela ben nazirus. There is likewise no she'ela with regard to nazirus. In, in the Torah, we find the word kedusha kadosh. Kadosh Gadel Pera Seya Roshay is a Pusik. So you were, you see the word Kadosh yeah in the context of Nazirus. <clears throat> so Nazirus the, thereby conforms or is a configuration of Hegdish, and Sheila simply doesn't work. <clears throat> Ubeis Hillel Savri and Beis Hillel, who said that he's not a Nazir, and he doesn't become forbidden in uh, Grogros either, holds Kerebi Shimon. Disnan, what's Shita's Rebbe Shimon? Rebbe Shimon, now maybe just a word of introduction. There is a phenomenon in Kochim known as a Korban Mincha, a meal offering. Standard meal offerings that people bring as on their own, voluntary meal offerings, Minchas Nidova is made of wheat flour. If a person had said, I accept upon myself to bring a mincha from barley, from barley flour. So there is no such thing as a voluntary meal offering brought from barley flour. What type of a vow effect does a a dedication, we call it an incorrect type dedication, have. So let's continue. The Snan Reverbi Shimon Poter, regarding someone who said, Hare Olai Mincha Minha Sorim, Rebbe Shimon exempts him. Shalom Hisnadev, he did not dedicate Kederech Amisnadvim, the way of standard dedication. Oh, so now. A person who says Hareini Nozir Minagrogros Minadvela is accepting upon himself this thing called Nazirus, which figures into the realm of Kotchim, even as we saw just a moment ago. However, 
we find within the realm of Kodshim that incorrect dedications simply don't take effect. Of course, if you subscribe to the approach of Rav Shimon, and that is what Beis Hillel does. We continue now to the top of Omid Beis. Before we proceed with the Gemara, we glance at the side of our marked Gemara. And by the way, if you need to access a marked Gemara, we can be reached at gmarkings at gmail.com. You will notice an Aleph and Beis. You also will notice that in the Gemara text. These are Shnei uh, Lishoynois, two versions of with regard to the Tana Rabbi Nosson, whose name you'll see double underline, She'eno Kemish Nosenu. Rabbi Nosson is a Tana as well, and he presents the Machlokes Beis Shammai Ubeis Hillel in a different form than we just saw. So now, the Gemara, <coughs> and take note of the differences. Masnison the Lo Ki Hai Tana. Our mission is not like the following. Tana de Sanyo, Rabbi Nosan Oimer, Beishamai Omrim, Nodur Vinozir. A person who said Hareni Nozir Min Hagrogros is in fact prohibited in eating the figs, and he is also a Nozir. Ubeisil El Omrim, Nodur Vein Nozir. He is prohibited, according to Beisil El, from eating figs, but not a Nozir. We did point out, but rather quickly, on Omid Aleph, the second line from the bottom, when the Gemara said, Beisil Savri Kirib Shimon, we pointed out that Beisil holds he is not a Nazir, and he is also not prohibited from the figs. <clears throat> Here, Beisil is presented as holding Nodur. He is under vow. He is prohibited from the figs, but he is not a Nazir. <clears throat> so, the Gemara explains the Reb Nosson version of the school of Beis Shammai. So as follows, Beis Shammai Savri Law Kerebi Meir U Kerebi Yehuda. Beis Shammai holds like Rebbe Meir, that holds Ein Odom Moitzi Dvorov Levatola, and he also holds like Rebbe Yehuda of our Mishnah. We had Rebbe Yehuda cited in our Mishnah. Once again, if you look back at the beginning of the today's year, the third line of the Mishnah, Rabbi Yudha said, meaning, according to Rabbi Yudha's version of Beishamai, <clears throat> there is, in effect, in, in effect, the acceptance of a vow, a vow prohibiting the figs. Beis Hillel, Savri, Law, Kribyosi. Beis Hillel holds like Kribyosi that said, Af Bigmar Dvor of Mitpas. You have to take into consideration the end of a person's comment, and in saying Hareini Nozir Min Hagrogros Min Atvelo, he is banning himself from things. Therefore, Reb Nossin's version of Beis Hillel says Nodur, but not a Nozir, because through the focus on the uh, end of his words, we see that he wasn't really interested in accepting standard Nazirus. Lishno Achrino Amrilo. Now another version of Rabbi Nosan. Again, you'll see not like the Mishnah. Rabbi Nosan Omer Beishamai Omrim Nodur Vieno Nazir. Right away, you see a difference between this and not only the version just before, but the Mishnah as well. He, according Beishamai holds, he is prohibited from figs, but not a Nazir. Well, Beishil Omrim Lo Nodur Velo Nazir. Basila holds he is not prohibited from the figs, nor prohibited from, uh, nor does he become a Nazir. That presentation of Basil is similar to the presentation we saw of Beis Hillel in our Mishnah, but nevertheless it's still not like our Mishnah from the Beishamai standpoint. And the explanation Beishamai Kerebi Yehuda, Beishamai of Rabbi Nosson in this second version is a reflection of Rabbi Yehuda's point that we saw in the Mishnah. It's Rabbi Yehuda's version. Uh, therefore, when we say that this is not like our Mishnah, once again, it's not like the Tanakhama's version of Beishamai, but rather like Rabbi Yehuda's version of Beishamai. Namely, that there is a vow here, pro- prohibition from 
the Grogros and Vela, or Beis Hillel Kerebi Shimon. And Beis Hillel holds like Rabbi Shimon that he is lo hisnadev kederech hamisnadvim. He vowed uh, a Nazirah's vow, but not in the correct or accepted, accepted uh, uh, fashion. Therefore, he is exempt. Like we saw, Shittas Rib Shimon. And, and now, we have a quote from the Mishnah in Maseches Menachas that we uh, referred to earlier regarding the dedication of a meal offering in the an unusual and the uh, abnormal fashion. What is the result? So here we have a we'll say more complete quote. See the five line section in a frame. The last line of this frame section is what we saw quoted earlier, namely Reb Shimon is not is not him. However, Reb Shimon was only one opinion. Now let's see the entire story. Okay, now the focus is on the issue of a meal offering dedication. Before we continue in the text, we do notice a topic heading. It reads under the Nosei, Hagemor Mavia Mishnah B'Menochus. The Gemara will cite the Tanaic source from Menochus, in which we see Hare Olai Mincha Lahovi Min Hasorim. I am accepting upon myself a voluntary meal offering. It's personal dedication to bring a meal offering from barley flour. Yovi Min Hachitim. This is what the Tanakama holds, the first opinion holds, that you shall bring, you're bound, you're obligated to bring a wheat meal offering. Then the Gemara will bring uh, two opinions we'll see as to who is the author of that Tanaic source. So, after we read the Tanaic source, you'll notice, let's just get a, a bird's eye view of the Sukya, you'll notice triangles that appear, Chizkiya, and then Rabbi Yochanan, and under our Mivne heading, we indicate the triangles are Shtei Deos, B'mi HaTana Dahach Mishna De Menochus, who is the Tana? And Chizkiya, Ma'amida, Kedivrei, Tanakamo, Shil Mishno Seinu B'Bei Shamai, the opinion of Chizkiya will say that this Mishnah from Menachas, the Tanakam of Menachas, corresponds, or is authored, is the author is, or the, the, uh, the name behind it is, <coughs> the first opinion of Beis Shammai that we saw in our Mishnah. We'll see the, the parallel, we'll see how that's developed. That's Chizkiah's approach. Number two, Rabbi Yochanan, Mamido Kedivrei HaKoyol, Rabbi Yochanan will set it up according to uh, all opinions. The um, Gemara, as it continues after that, will then uh, show how Chizkiah has a change of mind. And that's why you might notice that we have a, uh, a numbering scheme, one and two, uh, indicating uh, the Shnei Shlavim Bechizkiah, two stages in appreciating Chizkiah. So now we go back to the Gemara, we see the Mishnah Menachas, then the issue uh, that's dealt with is who is the author of that, two, initially two opinions as to that. Now the Gemara, Tanan Hosam, Ha'oimer Hare Olai, Min Cholahavi Min He says, I accept upon myself to bring a meal offering from barley. The ruling is Yavi Minachitim. He has to bring wheat. And we go on with several other examples of incorrect or technically incorrect dedications and then the result in each case. He says Kemach, meaning the same opening phrase, Hareolai Mincha, to bring from Kemach. Kemach is a certain quality of flour that's not used in meal offerings. Yavi Solas, he nevertheless is obligated to bring Solas, the Solas quality flour for the Mincha. He says, Shalom B'Shem Levona, I'm accepting upon myself to bring a Mincha, but without the requisite oil and Levona. Levona is a spice that is brought together with uh, uh, voluntary meal offerings. And he says, well, he's going to bring a Mincha without Shemen and Levona. The ruling is Yevienna, Shemen, or Levona. No, you'll have to bring your meal offering with those, even though you said otherwise. 
And he says, and here we deal with amounts. I'm going to bring a meal offering, chatsi isaron. And you notice we've been using quotation marks. This is what the fellow is saying. I'm going to bring a mincha, the same opening, hareolai mincha, lohavi, and he says chatsi isaron, a half an isaron. Isaron is a dry measure, and that is, in fact, incorrect with regard to a meal offering. Yavi Isaron Shalem. He must bring a complete Isaron. You don't have half Isronos in voluntary personal meal offerings. He says, Isaron Umechza. I'm going to bring a mincha of one and a half Isronos. So we say, no, Yavi Shnayim. You have to bring two Isronos if you said one and a half. Rabbi Shimon Poteh, Rabbi Shimon exempts Shalom Isnadev Kederech Hamisnadvim. Because his uh, dedication, his nadev, is to make a nidova, to make a, a pledge. He pledged a meal offering, but in the abnormal fashion. Shalok kederech hamisnadvim, and out of character, and therefore he is exempt. Man tana, the chiyomar, who is the tana that says what we just saw in the opening of this, and here was a quote from the opening line of the previous source, who is the Tana in Minuchas that would say uh, that when a person says Hare Olai Mincha Min Hasaurim Mevi Minachitim? Then when he makes this incorrect type dedication of a meal offering, saying that he's going to bring from barley, that he must bring from wheat. Who would say that? Omar Chizkiah B'Machloikes Shnuya. He says this is actually a Tanei controversy. Ubeis Shamayhi. And the Mishnah in Menachas conforms to Beis Shammai. And he proves it. Lav Amri Beis Shammai. Is it not so that when Beis Shammai said, Ki Omar, when a person says, like we saw in our Mishnah, Minat Grogros or Minat Vela. This is a little terse, but he had said, Hareini Nazir, Minat Grogros or Minat Vela. I'm going to be a Nazir from, from figs. <clears throat> different kinds of fig preparations. Havi Nazir. He is bound to be a regular Nazir. Based on the idea of Ein Adam Moitzi Dvarov Levatola. We saw that Beishamai in our mission was explained in accordance with Rebbe Meir. So a person doesn't say something for nothing. Hachinami ki Yomar Min So too, for the same reason, Ein Adam Moitzi Dvarov Levatola. A person doesn't say something for nothing. So too, ki Yomar Min When he said, I'm going to bring a Mincha from barley, Maybe min hachitim. Well, you have to you have to bring one from wheat. So just like, once again, what's the parallel? We saw in, in our mission an incorrect kind of nazirus a, uh, acceptance. Nazir from Grogros and Devela. He becomes a standard nazir. You have bring a mincha from that which is incorrect from Saurim. He has to do the correct thing. He has to bring a mincha from chitim. Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Afilu Teimo Divrei Hakol. The Mishnah Menachas, according to Rabbi Yochanan, is not limited to Beis Shammai. It is some. The Mishnah Menachas represents an opinion that even those who disagree with Beis Shammai would agree with. Bioimer, because the case in Menachas is where the person says, after he's informed that, hey, you know, you don't bring uh, Menachas from Sorim. <clears throat> You bring them from Chitim. So the the vower, the dedicator, says, Had I known that that uh, that saying from a Sorim is a mistake, that people don't vow that way, I wouldn't have vowed that way. I would have vowed this way, the correct way. I would have said Chitim. And as far as Toysvis is concerned, he... He says that explicitly. In other words, that's the case of the Mishnah in Menachas. And so what we have here is a person who's acknowledging that he made a mistake. Now, we'll, we must reveal a little bit more, uh, and that is, is that when a person acknowledges he made a mistake, a mistake is something that's not, not, not extremely far-fetched. It's uh, the idea of a mincha meal offering from Saorim. True, one doesn't bring a a voluntary meal offering from Saorim. But there are meal offerings in the Torah that are from barley. 
There is, for example, what's something called the Minchas HaOmer. It's brought on the 16th of Nisan, the the second day of Pesach. There is a Sota meal offering. When a woman is suspect of immorality, she brings something called a Minchas Knois, a meal offering, which also happens to be made of barley. So he said, oh, you know, I... I, I acknowledge I, I made a mistake in saying barley. I would have said wheat had I known that what I said by saying barley was a mistake. Uh, the other examples, by the way, in Maseches Menachas, the Kemach and the Shiloh B'Shem Lepono, there actually is precedent for those things also in the realm of Menachas. But the mistake was, is that in a voluntary meal offering, which is the subject of that particular mincha, kemach doesn't exist. The, the dry meal offering, non shem and non levona, also doesn't exist in the realm of a voluntary meal offering. But it, they do exist in the general realm of meal offerings. Hence, there's a, a basis for this kind of error. Let's continue in the Gemara. So, having... Uh, see now the two explanations as to who is the author of the Mishnah in Menachas. We continue in our Gemara. Omar Chizkia. Loi shanu elo shomar minasorim. The, the Mishnah in Menachas that says that he has to bring the wheat flour meal offering, that's only if his opening, his mistake, it's only where his mistake was Min I'm going to bring a meal offering from barley. That then we we tell him, you know, that's a mistake. So he's obligated to bring a wheat offering. If a person had said, according to Chizkiah, if a person had said, Adoshim is a type of legume in modern Hebrew. Adoshim is translated as lentils. Uh, so you can make, let's say, lentil flour. He says, I'm going to bring a meal offering. If his initial vow was to bring a mincha, a meal offering from Adoshim, lo maisi lo klum. He is not to bring anything. He's not obligated to bring anything. In other words, he said something that's totally vain. The Gemara asks, could Chizkia really hold that? Michti. Chizkia keman moikim lo lemasnis. And how did Chizkia set up the Mishnah in Menachas? We're referring to the first triangle that we had above. How did, how did, what did Chizkia say with regard to the authorship of the Mishnah in Menachas? Beishamai. He said, well, it's in accordance with Beishamai. Feho adoshim lagabi mincha kegrogros lagabi nozir domu. We were, we made a parallel before. We saw Beishamai in our Mishnah in Nazir saying that a person who says Hareini Nazir Minah Grogros he becomes a real Nazir. And could it not be said that just like Grogros has no connection with formal Naziros and yet he becomes a Nazir Adoshim has no connection with a Mincha so he should nevertheless be obligated to bring a Mincha just like we said he's obligated to become a Nazir. Viko Amri Beishamai, and in our Mishnah we saw that a person who said uh, he'll be a nazir from uh, from figs, he Viko Amri Beishamai have a nazir. Therefore, even if he were to say, "I'm going to bring a mincha from Adoshim," which is totally unrelated to a mincha, he should bring chitim. He should be equally obligated. So why does Chizkia limit the ruling of Maseches Menachas that he has to bring a correct a meal? Uh, a, a wheat meal offering, only if he had said, initially, I'm going to bring a meal offering from Sa'irim. So, the Gemara says, you know, that that's happens to be a very powerful question. And, Hadar Bey Chizkia, simply retracted from his, from what we saw in triangle number one. In other words, the Misha Menachas is not like Base Shammai. He retracted from his explanation of Maseches Menachas as being authored by Beis Shammai, and rather, he will now explain like Rabbi Yochanan. And as we saw, the case of Rabbi Yochanan was a person who who was informed of his error, and he said explicitly, had I known that I had made a mistake, 
by saying Sairim, I wouldn't have said Sairim, I would have said Chitim. The Gemara asks, what, uh, what made Chizkiah reject his original explanation? Oma Rova, Masnisen Kshisei. The Mishnah in Menachas is, we'll say, presented the problem that caused Chizkiah to retract. What aspect of the Mishnah in Menachas presented the problem? If Chizkiah, or if we are to explain that the Mishnah in Menachas is a straightforward Beis Shammai idea, my irya detoni min hasorim. Why does the Mishnah in Menachah speak about someone who said, I'm going to bring a mincha from barley? Why not go all the way, listening minu adoshim? If the Mishnah there is really based on base Shammai, that, as we explained earlier, a person doesn't say something for nothing, ain't all the moti dvar of Levatola, and once you said Hareini Nazir, uh, that's the guy's real intention no matter what comes out afterwards. So, the Mishnah in Menachas could have used as an example someone saying Harele Mincho from Adoshim and, and, and require him, even though he used a far-fetched example, require him to bring Chitim. That would have really been a, an illustration of how far Beis Shammai would go. But the Mishnah deliberately didn't use that example. It didn't use the example of Adoshim. It used the example of Sa'urim. And what's the nature of Sa'urim? The nature of Sa'urim is it's within the realm of Menachas. It's something that you could make a mistake about. And that's how Rabbi Yochanan had explained the mission. That's what Chizkiah subsequently uh, 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 changed to accept the Rabbi Yochanan approach. That it's a case of someone being informed of a mistake and saying, oh, I had I known that I was making a mistake, I wouldn't have said the mistaken thing, I would have said the chitim, the accurate thing. So you're dealing with something within the realm of error. There's a margin of error, an acceptable margin of error, and that doesn't extend beyond soir and barley. No one would make a mistake about adoshim. Now, as we go on in the Gemara, we've uh, bracketed off a, a line, and in the Meforshim, uh, many say that this the, the text that we have is not accurate, even though the the rush has a an alternative explanation accepting the text we 're going to follow the first approach and read what you see in the rush text, which is also similar to the text in Masechus Menachus where the same sugi appears. Uh, note we uh, right across from here in the rush commentary there 's a star, and we read. Instead of the bracketed section, we read Eloshma Mino from the fact that the Mishnah Menachas used the example of Sorim specifically, Mishum Ditoihu. It's an, a, a Mishnah to be explained based on someone having made a mistake. Bisorim Toi Badoshim, Mo Toi. With regard to a mistake, people will make a mistake concerning Sorim. They won't make a mistake. To, to, to think, <laughs> to, to even think at any point in time that a, uh, a mincha would be brought from Adoshim. We now continue with a statement made by Rabbi Yochanan, which we'll read it, and the Gemara will then question it. For Rabbi Yochanan Omar, Afilu Min Ho Adoshim. And Rabbi Yochanan says that if a person says, I'm going to bring a mincha, from Adoshim, even if he says Adoshim, he has to bring Chitim. You know, as Rabbi Yochanan goes, we'll say, a little bit beyond the example cited in the Mishnah itself. Not only someone who says, will have to bring Chitim, but even someone who says, I'm going to bring a Mincha from Adoshim. The Gemara asks, For Rabbi Yochanan, who do but Rabbi Yochanan's explanation before, notice where the triangle number two was above, Rabbi Yochanan, when he explained the Mishnah in Menachas, he explained it as someone who was informed of his mistake, and then 
said, had I known that I was making a mistake, I wouldn't have said the mistaken thing, I would have said the correct thing. What is within the realm of mistake? We said before, we explained this at length, that within the realm of mistake, we say, well, there's barley, yes, but no one would make a mistake about a meal offering being brought from lentils, from adoshim. So how can Rabbi Yochanan over here say that a person will be bound to bring a meal offering from wheat, even if he says adoshim? But that doesn't fit into the scheme of things, doesn't fit, fit into the realm of the, of making a mistake. You wouldn't make a mistake about that. So what does Rabbi Yochanan mean over here when he said, Afilu min hu'adoshim? The Gemara answers. Notice we have a long answer marking. Rabbi Yochanan, in this last statement, uh, where we underlined his name just three lines above, this is not Rabbi Yochanan explaining his own position with regard to the Mishnah in Menachas. This is Rabbi Yochanan will say, criticizing Chizkiah in his retraction from his, from his, from Chizkiah's initial explanation. So once again, this is not Rabbi Yochanan re- re- reflecting his own explanation. Rabbi Yochanan keeps his own explanation. The triangle number two above he keeps. That's the way Rabbi Yochanan understands the Mishnah in Menachas. However, what Rabbi Yochanan is saying here is he's turning to Chizkiah and he's saying, I don't understand why you rejected explaining the Mishnah there in accordance with Beishamai. It doesn't mean that I, Rabbi Yochanan, accept that. As far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to explain a Mishnah limited to the to the opinion of Beis Shammai. As you know, throughout the Shas, the Beis Shammai uh, school of thought is not accepted lahalocha, and therefore it's a we'll say it's a weaker position when it comes to setting up Mishnayas. If you have a choice in the matter, if there's if there's a let's say room to deliberate, I wouldn't take that approach. But you you Chizke, who did take that initial approach. Why did you retract? So, this is what Rabbi Yochanan is saying. Let's now continue in the Gemara. Lidvorov de Chizkiyahu de Ka'amar. Rabbi Yochanan in his most recent statement, when he said, Afilu minu adoshim, is addressing Chizkiyah. At, you, my time all kohadris why did you change your initial opinion? Triangle number one. Why did you back off of that? Mishum delo kotoni minu adoshim. Because, as you claimed, the Mishim Menachas didn't use as its example Hareolai mincho minu adoshim. So, you figured it couldn't be Beishamai. Because, if it was Beishamai, the, the Mishnah would have gone further and used Minu Adoshim as well as an example. Or it would have used Minu Adoshim uh, because Beishami would say, well, any, uh, any continuation is not going to affect the initial acceptance because of the concept of Ein Olam Motzi Dvar of Levatola. So you're saying because the Mishnah in Menachas didn't use that example, so it can't be explained in accordance with Beishami. Rabbi Yochanan continues in saying, Dilma Lomi Baya Komar Maybe the Mishnah in Menachas is in the Lo Mibaya structure. And that's explained right now. Lo Mibaya, I don't have to tell you. Ki Omar me'adoshim demaisi mincha ma'alyasa. That if a person would have said, Arealai mincha me'adoshim, there, is, there it's simple, there it's obvious that he's obligated to bring a proper mincha, a wheat mincha, because there's room for us to figure that a person who opens up by saying mincha, and then he says what, what's he really trying to do? He's really trying to retract. He's trying to back out because adoshim is, is so unrelated to mincha. It's a, it's the fellow's way of saying I don't want to bring a mincha. And we have a rule that says rishon. You you. Uh, cling upon, you grab, you um, accentuate the first part of his expression. Loshan Rishon, his initial words, Hareolai Mincha. So, in a case like that, it's clear, the case of Adoshim, 
would have been a clear obligation for him to bring a wheat mincha. Something as obvious as that doesn't need to be stated. The Mishnah in Menachas, if you want to explain it like you initially did, could have been explained even if he says Min HaSorim. There's a bigger Chiddush in Sorim. Even if he would have said, I'm going to bring a Mincha from Sorim, the ruling will be asked to bring Fitim. Emo, because there was room to think otherwise. Emo, Vadai Dehochi Ko'omar. When he said, I am, accept, I am voluntary, volunteering to bring, or I am uh, vowing to bring a barley meal offering, you know what was on his mind? He had in mind as follows. keminchas ha'oimer at the top of the Yudah Mar Aleph, oi keminchas soito tiktoish, iloi loi, that his initial vow was contingent when he said Hare Olai Mincha Min Asorim, he was saying I am I am vowing to bring a Mincha from Sorim if it can be dedicated, become sanctified as if it were a Minchas HaOimer or a Minchas Kinos the Sota or Minchas Sota is called also Kinos Tiktish then fine then my dedication shall be binding. And if not, I don't want to dedicate anything. And Sorim is something that one could very well think to be part of the Mincha realm, the voluntary Mincha realm, because of the these precedents. So that by saying Mincha Sorim, it could have been understood that the person was building a building in a contingency to his dedication. Not a retraction from his, from his dedication. The idea of a retraction, that's simple. That doesn't need to be said. Because if a person says, I want to bring uh, a proper mincha, and then he retracts, we say, Tfos Loshon Rishon. So that didn't have to be stated. That's Lomi Bayakomer. There he certainly would have been bound to bring a chitim offering. But even in the case where he says, I want to bring a mincha from Sa'irim, where it could have been interpreted as a mincha based totally on a condition, a contingency mincha, not an expression of retraction, but an initial contingency built in. If it's not going to be sanctified because simply there is no such uh, thing as a voluntary barley offering, I don't accept upon myself any dedication. Komash molon, the Maisi Menachitim, the Mishnah in Menachis, by using the Sorim example, is saying that even so, you are obligated to bring a wheat meal offering. So that you, Chizkiah, says Rabbi Yochanan, had no strong reason for backing off of your explaining the Mishnah in Menachis in accordance with Beishamai. With that, we conclude our shiur for today.